Hello everyone, welcome to the Hypergamous Journey. My name is Denise, thank you for stopping by. Here at this channel we talk about dating up, marrying up, leveling up. Dating, marrying someone or partnering with someone of a higher social standing. Keep in mind, I have not arrived, I'm on the journey with you. So here I share my dating advice, opinions, thoughts, my movie reviews and book reviews based on a hypergamous standpoint. Today, a friend of mine, a very dear friend, sent me a TikTok video of, Doc, of Judge Judy. Judge Judy has been on television for, I don't know, 50 years maybe? Yeah, about at least 50 years. I remember her as a very young woman and um, known for her straightforward, direct, candid delivery and way of dispensing justice. So I knew that I love Judge Judy right away because she's to the point. There's no need to beat around the bush with her. She... If you're lying, she'll call you out immediately and you're not going to boss her around or hoodwink her. She's not going for that. So anyway, my dear friend sent me this TikTok video, which is really an, an excerpt of a, a larger, longer interview that she did. But here are the major points that Judge Judy addressed. She said... Once a woman gives up financial independence to a mate, it's over. You have to be prepared because if you're not prepared, then you're stuck. And more women have to accept lifestyles that are, that are unpleasant because they are financially stuck. My friend and I sent each other, she, she sent me the TikTok video through text messaging and I told her that I really could really resonate, um, relate to this video because she, this is what her father told her and it's what my mother told me to make sure that I had a job so that I could support myself and I wouldn't have to depend on a man to support me. And I told my friend that this would this makes a really good video or something to discuss because as mature women who are dating 55 and older, we are or should be financially independent. We're able to take care of ourselves, and some of us have even raised children on our own, whether that's because we were divorced or because we never married our children's father um, or our child's father, we have learned to be financially independent. And so one of the questions I used to ask myself before I came, once I became immersed in Hypergamy and the, it's, it's, it's con the concept, the culture, the mindset of hypergamy. I asked my, I've asked myself this question. How does financial independence speak to hypergamy? And this is what I came up with. Now keep in mind, I'm on this journey with you, so I haven't arrived. I haven't implemented this. But this is what I'm thinking when my relationship comes along very soon. When my relationship comes along, first of all, I feel that once we decided that we want to be a couple, he should not be asking me how much money I make. That's first of all. He won't, he won't care how much money I make. So he's not going to be asking me how much money do you make. Because what I make is not really going to be considered in the household budget. And if he wants me to pay something toward the household expenses, I'm sure he will have in mind what he wants me to pay. What he wants me to pay 
and how much he wants me to contribute. And then we can have a discussion from that point. But since we're coming as two fully developed adults, mature adults, he has his finances, I have mine. I don't have any children, so that's not a consideration for me, but he has he may have a couple of children or who knows how many. So he has um, something that he wants to protect and leave his legacy to his children, which I'm fine with. But he should not be asking me how much money I make. The question becomes, what can you contribute to the household if that question must come up? And then I can give an amount. And then we can negotiate from there. So I have maintained my financial independence. We, have, we are having a discussion about, discussion about um, household finances and expenses and how much is I am expected to contribute and negotiating from that standpoint, but he shouldn't be asking me, you know, do you have a retirement account? Do you have insurance? Um, and who you're leaving things to? And how much money do you have in your retirement account? And how much do you have saved? He shouldn't be asking me any of those questions. And as far as who's moving into whose house, I personally have a very small home, 990 square feet. So he can't move here. <laughs> he can't move here. So the men that I'm dating are homeowners already. So I will be moving to his place. And I'm assuming it'll be bigger than mine because, you know, men have to have a man cave and electronics and the big screen TV. I have none of those things because they're not important to me. So they would probably be important to him, and I understand. So as far as financial independence is concerned, I think Judge Judy is right, that we must be financially independent. And the man and my mate is not asking me how much I make and how much I have saved and things of that nature because it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And... He's going to be the kind of man that is not really interested in how much I'm bringing, how much finances I'm bringing to the relationship. He will just know that I'm not trying to take anything from him and his children and their legacy or any of that. Um, yeah, that I'm not trying to do any of that because... That what he has for his children is for his children and not for me. And when we marry, what he has for me is for me and not for his children. So I'm imagining that things would just be separate. So there would be no fussing and fighting over resources and finances when he goes on in the by and by. Or if I go on in the by and by. If you like this video or any of my others, please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. And I will see you in the next video. Let me know what you think. Bye.